We're currently the only uh, entertainment center that is basically like a hybrid PC, console, uh, VR and laser tag all under one roof. We're basically the first ones in Sioux Falls to introduce the virtual reality to the community. They actually are now training to perform surgeries in virtual reality. There are actually virtual reality simulators right now available. You can purchase such game slash experience for as long as you have the uh, VR set up. At our store, one of the most popular games right now, still, is the Job Simulator. This is where it's gonna explode, probably, if, if not already exploding, is the entertainment industry, which is where we are at right now. The market is oversaturated with the cheap or absolutely free games. And right now there are two free games that just dominate the rest of the games, Fortnite and Epic Legends. There are so many distribution systems now too, like back in the days. It's just uh, Steam. 14 years ago it was just Steam. Obviously the communication, uh, teamwork would be the biggest one, uh, biggest benefits in gaming. But of course the moral skills as well, depending on what kind of games you're playing of course. So it's more than just entertainment. We even have some businesses coming in to do it. Uh, teamwork and they actually play video games together. Like they separate in groups and then they play against each other. They live with memories, they live uh, experiences, something uh, that they haven't before. What's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host Alan Sakyan. We are on site in the beautiful Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We are now going to be talking about Galaxy Gaming. We have Max Kaftanati joining us on the show. Hi Max. Hello Alan. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. Very pumped to talk to you. For those who don't know Max's background, he's the founder of Galaxy Gaming, which is a laser tag virtual reality and social gaming center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. They're approaching their 14th anniversary. You can find the links in the bio below, thegalaxygaming.com, as well as their Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter pages. All right, Max, let's start things off by asking you one of our favorite questions. Okay. What are your thoughts on the direction of our world? <laughs> if I only knew the answer to that. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows, to be honest. Um, uh, it, it's 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 hard to tell, and like we we can all see the technology evolving, and it's uh, going really fast. Um, uh, especially like what what I've noticed uh, the virtual reality introduction, uh, it did take off a lot. Uh, you might not see it at the households, but uh, definitely it gets uh, very popular in uh, all sorts of industries, military science, uh, health industry, uh, you name it. Yeah. The rapid pace of technological change is occurring. It's being democratized. Computing power is increasing. Yet our, our biological, this inner art that is our bodies that we have yet to really spiritually tune that well. It's kind of like this, do you ever feel like that's a little bit of like a struggle that we haven't even figured out our own like spiritual <laughs> divinity and we're like already trying to upload our consciousness? <laughs> well, it's a little bit too soon to upload consciousness. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we're anywhere there yet. Yeah. But we're trying to get but, into the virtual worlds and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, is, that is very true. It might be just like the way to escape the reality. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak, um, uh, but uh, yeah, for like uh, the gaming industry itself, uh, the businesses as usual, uh, you just see more like a high resolutions, more polygons, uh, maybe more power ups in the games. Uh, if we're talking about the gaming, of course, uh, in virtual reality, um, I would say like when it comes to the gaming side, I, I don't really know much uh, about everything else. I mean, I know in the military, uh, they're now doing training. Uh, so you, you, can, you can learn how to fly the, the jet without ever s s sitting in one, basically. Um, yeah. It's almost the same kind of scenario goes with the, with the health industry. Uh, they actually are now uh, training to perform surgeries in virtual reality. Yeah. There are actually virtual reality simulators right now available. You can, uh, you can even purchase such game slash experience 
um, for as long as you have the uh, VR set up and you can play that. Um, like for instance us like at, at our store uh, one of the most popular games right now still is the job simulator the job <laughs> yeah. simulator yep what do that they do one. in that one uh, there is a few different uh, things you can do in there like it usually starts out with a job at a uh, fast food place uh, which which can be pretty fun and funny because kids always mess around there like they don't necessarily do what they're supposed to be doing but yeah, you can actually cook in that game. <laughs> uh, it, it looks very cartoonish. It's not looking uh, like the most impressive game, even though there are some impressive games, uh, very immersive. Um, but for some other reason, they are not the most played games at the store. Your focus on virtual reality and that being just opening up insane amounts of possibilities and it already is being applied in so many industries like you said where do you see that you know as it becomes democratized as more and more people take augmented and virtual realities for their work life so it you know becomes basically a part of what we do every single day it increases creative ability when i don't have to use this this laptop but instead i can just have a beautiful 3d space in front mm -hmm. of me that i can just go and edit video in and be creative mm -hmm. in where do you see that all going mm. you mean like the time frame wise and <laughs> like experience wise like on a daily basis we're all going to be in those um, environments engaging with each other well i can tell you this much we're not going to see that anytime soon uh, a couple not, decades not um maybe a decade from now there is a possibility of that like the if you if you want to have photorealistic uh, graphics quality uh right now currently it's kind of sort of possible in in vr it, it just of course you're gonna have some limitation to the, to that uh, be, uh because uh due to the hardware limitation uh the game developers for instance they can they have to cut corners right now so they can make a more realistic graphics but it'll be a much smaller space where you're going to be able to see all that graphics and vice versa like you want to have like a bigger world the graphics are going to have to be downscaled so like in 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 our store we uh we do have some graphics um graphics cards installed in the vr systems that are pretty much the top of the line. Um, and you can play uh, some um, graphics intense games already. Um, but I would also say uh, even those cards do struggle. <laughs> so um, one nice thing about the VR, uh, this is where it's gonna explode probably, if, if not already exploding, is the entertainment industry, which is where we are at right now. Um, We've been noticing more and more um, bigger companies uh, come into this market. Facebook buying Oculus. Uh, yeah, but that one, like, and the, that that sort of news is uh, more towards you know, like, it's more about the households, individuals. Um, I'm talking about more like a more a lot more serious setup, which you cannot obtain at home. Uh, we're talking about like commercial grade. Oh yeah, like, like the ones in like Hollywood where they're doing mm, some crazy not, things around like doing like volumetric capture of mm -hmm. like a human or like an object and yeah. then they can just the like bring that the, into yeah. computer gra like Yeah, the Hollywood, is, uh, the Hollywood is actually um, using, uh, using this uh, to do the filming. Like Apparently you I think it's 80% of all mm -hmm. um, a uh, current film is already CGI? Mm -hmm. There is a good chance of that. You can probably see some videos where the people are like covered in the nets yes. and they have this like a sensors on the yes. bodies. Yes. So that's that's how they use a VR and in that regard. Um, they have to use a very expensive cameras which are uh, very hard to obtain just because of the cost. Those uh, are the red cameras or which cameras uh, enable it's, that it's, kind of stuff? It's a special capturing, uh, capturing hardware cameras basically. 
uh, and the resolution is insane there. Mm -hmm. So that that's why you can't just like buy one of those pieces for home. We're talking about uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, dollars yeah. for the equipment. But uh, the companies are making it more affordable for businesses currently. Um, even though it's still uh, like, I mean, the, the prices, I, I do know some of the prices for some of the commercial VR systems. It can go as high as $450,000 for a setup, which would not make a lot of sense in a smaller communities, but we are in a smaller community, so we have to, um, we have to look for something that's more like competitive price-wise. Uh, and there are solutions like that. So, like uh, right now, uh, the systems that we have, um, it's not a commercial type of like a, a commercial grade of a setup um, because um, uh, the software is not like a, a third, uh, not like a proprietary software that we're using. Um, when it comes to the commercial grade ones, they usually uh, develop the game specifically for the hardware that they supply. And uh, that type of software slash games you can't replicate anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So you can't you can't obtain this for for mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how much money you're gonna spend on your system, you just won't be able to access it uh, because the library, like subscription to those, can cost tens of, uh, tens of thousands of dollars annually. So that's something to keep in mind. So then, is a lot of what is right now being used at the edge by like Hollywood and other um, major uh, organizations that are able to afford this equipment that's slowly being democratized. It seems like more and more we're going to see um, CGI being used, these like volumetric capture of a human and then me being able to like just click and drag you through an actual like virtual reality and then also throwing objects in there that have been volumetrically captured and then me mm -hmm. just being able to make whole videos mm -hmm. from just completely digitally yeah, through the, the, libraries. And uh, the, the problem with all the things you just described is the power. Like you, you have to have enough power um, in your hardware to, um, to perform all those activities. And um, it's simply not possible currently. Um, there is a few, um, I would almost say like a gimmicky hardware pieces that are available, but there are more, uh, they're designed f more for like entertainment for more than anything. Um, the, basically the, the challenge for the VR currently to, to bring it to the public in general is the hardware, like you, what would be convenient for you to use. Uh, we're talking about the glasses, or we're talking about the, like a headset. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just don't picture somebody wearing going around and wearing a headset on the street. Contact lens. <laughs> uh, contact lens, maybe, but then what's going to render all, all the graphics for you? 5G. 5G. <laughs> <laughs> The, that brings the problem as well. There, there was n numbers of companies that tried um, um, basically installing the rendering hardware somewhere, like basically somewhere remote. Uh, the idea behind it was, uh, let's say you just using your laptop to game, you just have to connect to, uh, to this company server, which would be rendering all the graphics. That unfortunately does not work. Uh, you have to have something uh, basically n that's not remote. Um, even right now, like it, it's actually pretty challenging uh, because even even right now, uh, for example, HTC Vive Pro uh, sets like a VR sets, they do offer the option of going completely wireless. Basically, it's called a free roaming experience. And the problem with that one is. Yes, it's cool. Like you, the, the, basically, you have to inst install the battery on top of your set, mm -hmm. and you're connected via Wi-Fi to the computer. Mm -hmm. The computer has to be in close proximity still. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the problem is, even over Wi-Fi, and, uh, and Wi-Fi is uh, much stronger than you know, like the ran any random internet connection. So even over Wi-Fi, uh, there is a uh, bandwidth problem. There is a bandwidth limit mm. because you can tell, like when when you're wearing that, uh, you can tell that the graphics aren't as great 
and all of a sudden you have a latency slash legs. Yeah, yeah. So you will be noticing all of that. For now, wired versus wireless. So like they, I mean, it's possible to uh, to make, I, I think a Microsoft has a, uh, I think it's called HoloLens. Yeah, the HoloLens they've been, too. Yep, yep, they've been toying with this idea. It's extremely expensive. I think it's about $3,000. $5,000, yeah. yeah. And it's not even as, as good as you would imagine. Like it's nowhere near close to uh, an actual VR headset. First of all, uh, well, just because that it's AR is really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, that one is kind of like a cool idea uh, to have it. And of course, they, they had to overcome some obstacles like um, the power of the hardware. Again, they have to simplify the graphics. So it, the graphics are very simple on that. It's like in our entertainment industry, I, I'm not sure how good that is. What are the other current applications that the kids and adults are coming into Galaxy Gaming to use the VR for? You gave the idea that mm. is the current one of the current applications is like they can get behind like this job simulator, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. The kids mm -hmm. can like figure out like maybe I am interested in this like healthcare field or maybe mm -hmm. I am interested in this technology field or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So what are the other things that people are using the VR People mainly for? come in, of, uh, of course, the main, the main reason they come in is they come in for entertainment. Yeah. So they come in to have fun, they come in to escape boring reality, which sometimes is the case here in our city, <laughs> depending on the weather. Um, <laughs> you do have to make a lot of your own fun in Sioux Falls, <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, I, I mean, some people even come in to use the vacation simulator game. That There's we a have vacation for. simulator? Yeah, there is a game that's called vacation simulator. So you basically are out somewhere on the beach in VR. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, that's not the main reason people come in. That's yeah. not the main uh, game yeah. that people want to play in VR. Uh, but of course, one of the nice things about VR games is uh, they immerse, uh, a lot, they're a lot more immersive. Yeah. Um, so you do feel like you're actually there. Um, and they're a new thing. So like a lot of uh, people uh, played on our location for the first time. They've never played VR before. Uh, or if, or yeah. if they did, it would have been VR glasses for 10 bucks. Those kinds, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a smartphone or or them, a yeah. smartphone yeah. VR, yeah. which is, I mean, you can't even compare, compare yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. So that's good, you're opening them to the, uh, what, it's, it would be interesting to see what, if you're like wearing an EEG or mm -hmm. so you're like mapping your neural activity and then like mm -hmm. a child gets exposed to virtual reality and just mm -hmm. to be able to like catalog what happened to the brain mm -hmm. during that experience because it, I bet a lot of creative thoughts occur like, mm -hmm. whoa, what are we gonna be able to do with this mm -hmm. technology? Yeah, that's true. Uh, another one, uh, fun and actually education, uh, like educating experience is uh, Google VR. Uh, Google VR, you ever heard about that one before? Did Go it? Google Earth VR. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That one is really nice. Yeah. It's, uh, it's photorealistic graphics and you can go to any place on the planet, planet basically. Yeah, that's like really you cool. can explore. Um, you can see the uh, different countries before you even go there, or if yeah. you decide. <laughs> you can drop into Machu Picchu and like look yes, around yes. and yeah, stuff like that. That's really cool. It is, yeah. And um, um, with a with a nice set of hardware, it does look very realistic. Like it's with a nice set graphics. of hardware, you don't need to fly mm. <laughs> to another part of the world. Yeah, that is true. We did we did That's have some. Uh, some uh, some grandma came in. She's from uh, UK. She just wanted to see her homeland without like it, it's really hard for her to travel. Yeah. So that was uh, one interesting uh, time when somebody used it for that, basically just to um, to see the places where she's been like a really long time ago, and yeah. she just um, due to some health issues she is unable Could to travel. go there. That is a cool use case. Yeah. Yeah. I bet she had a lot of fun doing that and connecting back to her childhood in those locations. Yeah, yeah. it's fun even for me, like and, and to to visit, like to see different uh, landscapes, countries, yeah. uh, anywhere. That was really uh, really fun. I, 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 I tried do it once in a while. I do it obsessively on the 2D uh, mm -hmm. computers. All the, I do it obsessively. I love Google Earth. So mm -hmm. yeah, to be able to go in 3D, I mean, to be able to see the different places in the world and understand how. Uh, geographies have evolved and mm -hmm. cultures have evolved you know what 
what their environments look like. Not very many places uh, outside of suburban United States look like the suburban <laughs> United States. Yeah, yeah, that's so, very true. Uh, another one thing that's worth noting about the virtual reality is it's different. Uh, basically, it's very different from gaming. Uh, first of all, the, the crowd that comes in to play VR is not a gamer crowd, so to speak. Like, it's not, uh, it's not the same people that come in and play video games all day or for hours at the store. Um, they, it's basically a very different type of activity, in a way. Some of the games there, uh, they do require a lot of physical activity. Uh, in a way, it's almost like working out. It is like a workout. There are boxing games. There is a music game, See? music games. Uh, the Beat Saber VR, where yeah. you ac actually have to slash cubes in, in a proper like uh, rhythms. Rhythms. Yes. So those uh, those will make you work Sweat. out. Sweat. Yeah. Yes. That's good for your health. It is. But yeah. not so the and the it's bigger people can't. <laughs> and it's actually uh, it's like one of the nice things. It's actually it's really fun. Uh, I was kind of out of breath once when I was actually doing a boxing game and you actually have to like really uh, put a lot of force into like punches there because the camera can see when you just like you know waving your hands or you actually like really trying to go so so the the camera can sense it so you can't really cheat that that's cool so you do have to put a lot of a lot of effort yeah. a lot of power different crowds mm -hmm. for the different different yeah. crowds yeah I would say um, when we were first introducing VR uh, here in town, we thought it was going to be uh, gamers coming in. But uh, to our surprise, it was more of a couples for the date nights, mm. uh, either usually before going to the movie or after going to the movie. Because we are obviously, we, we communicate, we talk to people, uh, just like how they came about and like how, what kind of games they like. And yeah. we would normally find out that the, there is a movie that's going on, but they want to do something before that. And VR allows you just that because you can have a lot of fun and even in 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, in a game, you would normally need a lot more. Like to start one game, when by the time it's done, it's going to be like 40 minutes or so. Uh, VR offers you a lot s a shorter games. Uh, they do have games that are appealing for our families, and we get a lot of families as well. We have a lot of uh, parents coming in with uh, with their children. Uh, there is a game that's called Loco Dojo. It's pretty much uh, Mario Party in virtual reality. Ooh. It's a bunch of mini games on VR. And it's super oh, fun. The, it gets mini a lot. games yep. in Mario Party are yeah. like the it gets best. A lot yeah. of, it gets a lot of pl uh, play and it's super fun, funny to watch and to play. So even if somebody is just watching it, it's already entertaining enough for them. Uh, of course, there are some other games that are worth noting, like the Serious Sam The Last Hope is where you and your friend or whoever comes with you um, you end up on a planet and uh, you're being moved from one planet to another um, you're being given a certain weapons and you just blast a bunch of enemies that are running your way it's not really like scary game it's more like a, a slightly spooky i would say it has tons of power-ups over time when you uh, basically you score the points after you kill the monsters and then you can buy new and bigger guns yeah. more ammunition, more power-ups. Yeah. So that one is getting a lot of play and it's very popular at the store too. Okay, so it's also cool hearing from you not only like the variety of VR applications mm -hmm. for entertainment, which it seems like the entertainment's gonna like kick it off fast and then it's gonna get more into industry and whatnot as well. But there's also, it's kind of interesting, you also have really like those multi hundred thousand um, mm dollar -hmm. camera sets and CGI and all that stuff. So they're kind of both the bottom's picking up fast, but the top's also continuing to become the more and more cutting edge is being pushed over time. Yeah. And then, so there's also a difference between what VR people are coming into play and then what the normal, uh, like social gamers are coming in for PC and Xbox One are the big ones. You also have a laser tag going on. We'll get to laser tag in a bit, um, which is even a bigger workout than <laughs> VR is. So, so, on, um, on PC and Xbox One, um, a lot of kids are coming in to play Fortnite. I mean, there's a, just a, obviously a ridiculous amount of games, League of Legends, mm -hmm. right? So like, yeah, so walk us through what they're coming in to play, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but yeah, the gaming market is extremely tough currently. Um, like yes, it's a multi. They they call it multi-billion-dollar industry, but at the very same time. There are just so many games to choose from, so the, it's 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 kind of like a rough market for our publishers slash developers to even bring the games because no one knows how well it's gonna sell because the market is oversaturated with the cheap or absolutely free games. And right now there are two free games that just dominate the rest of the games, um, and that would be Fortnite and Apex Legends. Yeah. Um, uh, Fortnite is obviously everybody knows by now probably yeah. developed by Epic Games uh, and they have their own software distribution system. Um, there are so many distribution systems now too, like back in the days, it's just uh, Steam. 14 years ago it was just Steam. Uh, now we have Steam, you have Ubisoft, U Uplay. That's another one that's digital software redistribution system. Yeah. There is um, um, Epic Launcher. Yeah. There's a Bethesda Launcher. This is Bethesda Launcher. Not sure why they decided to <laughs> to start offering their own launcher. It was not the greatest idea uh, because you know, what's the point offering one when you only have like five games to choose from? I don't know. I think Blizzard has their own. Blizzard, yeah, Blizzard had their own for a while. Again, uh, they uh, they don't have as many games. Uh, it kind of. Um, it kind of actually uh, probably does the opposite for them because currently they're called Blizzard Activision or Activision Blizzard and uh, all the newest Call of Duty titles are being released strictly on a Blizzard app. That means you cannot obtain it on Steam and a lot of people just refuse to purchase it on Blizzard or even start their own account. They just will not leave or they will not log off to Steam. <laughs> you can if you're if you're once if your computer is powerful enough you could stay logged into Steam you and can you both, can yeah, they just refuse launchers. they just refuse to they, they refuse, refuse to have too many launchers because right because now if the people are being pushed because they want to be their own everyone wants to have their own yeah, launcher. platform launcher imagine this logging into all this that's what the apps are some. like right now it's <laughs> like the social accounts Facebook yes. Twitter LinkedIn yes. Instagram it's just like that yes. Everyone wants to have their own, the, be their own <laughs> platform and stuff. Yeah, which is um, which is certainly not uh, not the best idea. Like I, I don't see that. Netflix, Hulu, way. Amazon, mm -hmm. HBO. There's the same thing on videos. Yeah. Except, except uh, we're talking more like a distribution for a game, for which games, is for, yeah. uh, people once they when, once they're very comfortable in in uh, you know like uh, having one or two. Um, distribution software uh, accounts, they don't really feel like leaving. Yeah. Or n I'm not even talking about leaving, they don't feel like making another one, another one. on top of this. Yeah. Like I personally, uh, I do have Blizzard account, I have Steam, I have Origin. Origin, that's another big one. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually strongly believe that uh, the reason uh, Battlefield sales aren't, aren't as good on PC, or uh, I should say bad, because I remember the the year when it was first released, Battlefield 2, that is, we were running out of licenses for that game. We had to get like 40 accounts for it. But then when Battlefield 3 got released, even 10 copies were not getting played. Uh, and at that time, the game was being released on Origin client. Uh, people just didn't want to make their own accounts for it. And they were forcing everybody to get the client to be able to buy the Battlefield. So, like so I'm already buying the game, and yeah, then you want you me to get your client and, to. And account. if you have to like buy it instead of just download it and make an account. No, you 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 do. I mean, you buy it and you download it, but you still have to go through the hassle of creating your own account, and yeah. people don't like this. So how about um, when you have something? How many total stations do you have right now on P, on for PC and we Xbox have, One? We um, have over the years. Our PC number, like oh, originally started from 20, it went to 40, and then I would say more like due to the lack of space, uh, the consoles were in more demand. We started out with like eight consoles at some point. Uh, the number of consoles essentially increased. Uh, currently, we have 34 consoles, consoles. Yeah, yeah. and we have 28 PCs. So we had yeah. to. Those are big numbers. Yes, we had to bring yeah. the number of PCs down. So let's so let's explore this. So then, when you have, let's say, 
you, you like these kids want to come in and play like League of Legends mm -hmm. or Fortnite or yep. Madden. There's so many possibilities, right? And you were talking about like you having to own specific licenses, right? You have mm -hmm. to own like if they want to, if ten people want to play League of Legends, but you only have like eight licenses purchased, that type of thing. Uh, How does that work? <clears throat> it's uh, that one is actually pretty simple. Um, for for a lot of these games that are free, we don't have to provide any licenses at all. They just you just log in with your own account and you're good to go. What about when there are like licenses? When it's a license, for example, games like Battlefield, yes. for instance, okay. which you have to pay sixty per license. Yeah, that you have to pay sixty per license. We don't get any discounts on the games. Uh, we don't get free games either. So usually we have to pay the full price on games and. Um, even though we're basically like a spot where the games get exposure Content. for for developers slash publishers, uh, very often they they don't think that we have any effect on on the bottom line. So they're like, well, we 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 don't really have any interest in working with the gaming centers. But Monster uh, works with you, the energy drink. Monster. Monster to, to a certain extent. To cer at least yeah. a little bit. So there's yeah. some, at least some people see the value in mm -hmm. one. Yeah. 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 Okay. So then what happens with like Battlefield and like licenses? With the Battlefield licensing system, we have a, uh, a software license management system in place. Is that which, a third party or is yeah, that someone a, else? It's a, it's a software that we basically were one of the sponsors of. Okay. It was developed uh, by one company and basically what it does is let's say if you have 30 PCs and you only have 10 licenses for a Battlefield game, yeah. it will automatically distribute those license keys slash accounts to the to the machines running. And once you reach number 10, yes. it will stop doing that. Yeah, that's cool. Once, once somebody stops playing the game, it will instantly become available again. Yeah. So somebody else can for get any, that. Yeah, that's cool. So, but how do you know how many licenses to buy for a game? Like, you have to uh, base you, it on what popularity metrics? Yeah, you just yeah, you just base it on popularity. If you see the game is getting more play and you keep running out of licenses constantly, it's easy to add. Yeah. You just buy more games. Just buy more <laughs> licenses and then put it yeah. into the management system yes. and it'll distribute it. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. So then, okay, so you have to have a management system that has all of the games plus all of the licenses that is constantly being tapped into as people want to use it or get yes. log out of it, log into a new game. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty complicated system. You guys also have some extreme internet speeds, 500 megabits mm -hmm. per second up and down. Yeah, we, originally speed. we started out with 20 megabits download speed <laughs> back in 2005. Back in five, yeah. that was, uh, yeah, Yeah, the upload rate was right around five megabits yeah. per second. In 2005. So maybe. like when we moved uh, to our fourth location, um, we decided to uh, bump up the speed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, we we were able to um, um, uh, to get a pretty decent price in for it too, even though it's still really a lot. Like it, yeah. our build fund probably quadruple. Yeah. From when it was before, like before we our internet speed was uh, 250 megabits per second down, and I believe 25 up on the cable modem. Yeah. And now it's all fiber optics. That's great. Uh, it's now a fiber optics uh, business um, business line, 500 up and down. Yeah, it's so fast. So you can handle, can, can you then handle like all, you have, you know, about let's say 60 total like units, consoles. And we can, we can handle uh, all not just, playing. Uh, we, we, with this kind of a speed, uh, technically you can handle even 300. You consoles or PCs? simultaneously yes. playing yes that's pretty crazy yeah they don't use as much as people normally think like they you do use a lot of speed connection speed when you download the patches or download the games but when you actually are in the game uh normally you never go about uh you never go more than five megabits down at the same time and uh one megabit up usually that's the top per system how did you initially in 2005 even decide that you wanted to get involved with this? Who were you growing up that also got you interested in gaming? Um, I w well, I mean, I, I was kind of a gamer myself when I, w when I was in school. And when I, went, uh, when I was in college, uh, we were hosting a lot of LAN parties. And uh, that, 
that did seem like it was uh, something extremely fun. That's what people really enjoyed doing. And um, um, at that at that time, um, it was kind of like a right timing for that as well. There was a lot of games coming out around 2005. Uh, we had counter, a new Counter Strike Source being released. We have Battlefield 2 being released. So the, those were all major titles uh, that were very promising. Um, at that time, um, not a lot of people could afford a really nice gaming systems. Um, so the business concept was basically just to rent the systems out uh, to users and they would come in and play together. Uh, it was very inexpensive, like uh, at that time uh, the pricing was about $4 per hour or you can get three hours for uh, I believe $10 back then. So it wasn't so you, expen you it was expensive kind of for like, somebody. We're already doing LAN parties and this is popular. Let's just make it into a, a business and and host our LAN parties in there and then see if other people want to come well, kind of thing. It wasn't, no, I would not say it was like we were already making LAN parties. The last time I was, I was, ho uh, was involved in hosting a LAN party uh, before that was probably 1999. Okay. So you it just was, knew it was uh, popular. Yes, I, okay. I knew it was popular, and uh, I knew it was something that uh, people would probably enjoy doing. Um, considering the lack of entertainment in the city yeah, here, yeah. you couldn't really do much. Um, I mean, the, the city size was uh, big enough to sustain this kind of a business yeah. model. But probably only one. Galaxy gaming, like yes, I would, yeah. I would say, I would say so. So yeah. like, the, there was of course a competition that uh, magically um, opened up just a week after we opened. Are they gone now? Yeah, they're who, gone now. Who was uh, it? it was uh, Gamers Computer Gaming Center. Computer they were Center. they were in a better location than us. Um, like I, when when I originally opening and going through the business plan. I didn't want to uh, risk at the same time too much, so um, I decided to up, opt out for a, a kind of like okay location for yeah. the business yeah. in the residential area, which later kind of, um, I mean, later um, I've noticed that it was probably not the best idea to do it this way. Uh, the competition opened up uh, across from movie theater. Yeah, so there were kind they were constantly packed and then it create, created this um, vibe overall that uh, they were the first and uh, we, were, we just kind of like open afterwards but that was completely different there. Uh, I mean you could, you could actually say that we opened at the same time because they're just a week apart. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they only lasted for a little over three years and then they ended up closing. I think they had some management issues and whatnot, because according to some customers, uh, there was uh, not a lot of equipment that was in like upkept. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so, so you were constantly then. You have to constantly then either update in like you know, purchase new graphics cards or purchase yes. new processors, purchase new licenses. You're constantly, man. How does this? Yeah, this is a tough business model. You know, you have to buy all of the equipment, mm -hmm. but then you have to constantly, basically every year, you have like a big, you know, more licenses, more graphics cards, more processors, um, et cetera. But you're also selling the older ones um, so that you're like, you know, you have an ecosystem at least to other people you're selling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you don't actually have to change the hardware as often as you might think. Every what, uh, three, five years? Yeah, somewhere around like three, five years. Uh, that, that would be... Um, fair estimate. As far as the games go, um, you don't really have to buy the games. Like, we don't really have to buy the games. There's a lot of free games because that are being played. A, when, when the games that you're essentially buying cost, uh, like, the, yes, they do cost money, uh, but when they don't get played as much as the free games, then you start reevaluating, like, why do we even need to offer these games yeah. when they don't get as much play? played anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Like the the Gears of War for is a good example. I think the uh, last one I played was three. Gears yeah. of War three. Gears of War, uh, it's highly acclaimed game. It's and it's uh, cons consistently getting extremely high scores everywhere on, on the reviews. 
Uh, all it was doing in our store is just collecting the dust. Collecting Nobody would touch it. Interesting. Yep, it didn't. It didn't matter. Gears of War two, three, or four. Uh, people just did not have an interest here in our store. When did you incorporate laser tag? What year? Laser tag. Uh, when we were moving toward the third location, um, which was the one by Century Theaters. Yes. Yeah. Kind kind of like in that yeah. area. Yeah. Um, I decided that it was it was a time to introduce uh, another type of attraction for somebody that might not find gaming as appealing. Yeah. Uh, basically, I was looking for an attraction uh, that you can't really replicate at home. Gaming you still can replicate at home. You're just not gonna. I mean, of course, you can't have six Xboxes at home yeah. or six gaming PCs, but. Uh, not everybody needs one. Like uh, there is a lot of people that instead of going and being social, they're just playing at the basement uh, and they don't yeah. don't go out. Just okay. stay and talk to their friends on the mic. Uh, so at the, that's that was the time when uh, the mic and basically online gaming has been becoming extremely popular uh, versus the year 2005. Uh, around that time, a lot of LAN features of the games were actually started getting removed from the games. Like you could you could still join people over the internet, but on a local area network, it started going away. Why this do was, you think that is? Um, because the internet has become uh, more accessible for everybody. Um, in 2004, 2005, not everyone had a decent connection speed to be able to play at home. So that was obviously one of the things. But uh, as times went by, everyone had access to the fast internet connection. And uh, it was right around 2008, 2009. Um, at the very same time, when we were moving, calling uh, like our name back then used to be Galaxy Land Center. Mm -hmm. It was based local area network name. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, the feel of that started fading away because it was like land. <laughs> what does it even mean anymore? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> and uh, especially when considering in introducing laser tag uh, yeah. to the city, yeah. it it was just uh, I felt it was a good idea to change it to Galaxy Gaming. Um, and I think the only only other laser tag center was Giggle Bees. I yes, think. back back then. Uh, uh, but by the time that we're actually opening uh, the new location, Gigglebees was already closed down. Yeah, they were using uh, a very old laser tag equipment. Very it old was laser tag. Basically, equipment. laser tag from the eighties. From the eighties. And, 80s. and um, <laughs> laser tag, I mean, the, it it has its own history. Um, at some point, I would say sometime between like two thousand two, two thousand twelve, somewhere on there. Um, the laser tech uh, has been going through some rough times because they, I mean, everybody remembers how goofy those guns looked like. Mm -hmm. They look goofy and the vests kind of look the, goofy. Yep, yeah. and uh, in, and in general, the setup would always be some some spaceship, which was like that. The idea has become so old, and spaceship. people just like, yeah, it would get old pretty fast. How did you pick your temple theme? That, that's another thing. Uh, when we were opening that two, uh, the, the, the location in 2010, uh, because of the gaming part of the business, we wanted to be appealing to the gamer crowd as well. Uh, so at that time, the Call of Duty series games were extremely popular. Hugely yeah, they were popular. Big. So the decision, decision was made to make it more like a a realistic combat simulator. It was even mm -hmm. the equipment that we were using was called Battlefield Live. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Australian company that designs uh, uh, completely independent guns. Uh, like they are not connected to the laser tech system. Like they are not connected to the special software. Mm -hmm. uh, they just go off the radio signal. Uh, there are some drawbacks, of course. Like you don't really get to see the the scoreboard. Mm. So you're not gonna have that, mm -hmm. and uh, there was also a limitation on what kind of uh, gameplay scenarios you can do. So we would always be stuck with the um, uh, the mission that in Call of Duty it was called Search and Destroy. Yeah, single but, life. Uh, but yeah, 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 it was basically a team elimination. That's what they were playing, and uh, unfortunately, uh, not a lot of people were liking this um, this mission. 
because if you're not if like if you're not a very good player on laser tag you will get discouraged pretty fast, fast. and easy because yeah. you will rush you'll get yeah, eliminated and, and you'll, you'll have to sit, and sit out and wait until yeah. the game is over exactly so even though it was i mean for that time it was really cool the guns were looking very realistic they looked and felt and sounded like the real guns um it, it daytime kind of came to the end as well <laughs> um, the arena we felt it, it needed some change like we looked at who the customers were uh, mainly uh, and we did like f for the customer crowd we had a lot of younger kids yeah. coming in so we decided to look for something that would appeal to both adults and the kids at the same time uh, and that was the delta strike equipment which we ended up getting mm. um, they it, they don't look too goofy uh they look actually fairly modern but at the same time they're very safe they have like a rubber noses mm -hmm. uh, they're not heavy so they're fairly light and uh, they just i mean they just look and sound cool when you use them mm -hmm. they also have tons of different gameplay scenarios even the zombies mm -hmm. and that's what people like yeah. Uh, the of course the 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 most play uh, we see is the team deathmatch yeah. or a delta one shot. It's basically you just like go in and you just start shooting everybody, and at the end of the game you will you will see the total scores. Yeah. So it's basically even if you're not the greatest player, you're not gonna get discouraged because even if you get eliminated, you're back in the game in about five seconds or so. Yeah. Once you're gone. Um, hit points get restored automatically, exactly. you're back in the game. Uh, but uh, at the very same time, we wanted to go with something uh, much cooler f uh, for the design of the arena itself. Yes. Um, I decided to uh, incorporate both ancient city and the jungle. Yes. The company originally offered either jungle or the ancient city, but I felt like we, with this size of the arena, we should blend in both and that's what we ended up doing and uh, people are really liking what we did yeah ancient city <laughs> jungle themed laser tag it's a yes. really cool it's yeah. also yeah. it's also very unique because even if you go to minneapolis omaha or des moines you will not find this kind of a design uh, you will not this kind of a quality of the arena itself um, it's completely interactive it has uh, video based stations which essentially are uh, interactive power-ups so you just come up to one and if it has any power-up available like energy shield or rapid fire you shoot at it and your gun instantly uh, instantly gets it. gets it you don't have to actually like physically press any buttons mm -hmm. so that's where you know that it's interactive completely yeah. if you shoot at uh, certain uh, objects in there like we do have targets uh, you also see the effects come off um, as well as getting extra points. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes our arena very unique. And uh, the capacity is also pretty impressive. Our old one, we could only have 16 players. In a new one, we have 30 guns. 15 so on we, 15. Yeah, you can go 15 on 15. Uh, but with this software that we have, it allows us to have up to nine teams simultaneously. So if some business comes in, um, groups of threes or something, yep, yeah. Groups of three, like different departments, or just like a groups of people coming in, just like random walk-ins on the weekends. We can put them all on the different teams if we want to. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. This is cool. This is like the really, it's the future of immersive experiences. Yes. A lot of people are really pumped about that mm -hmm. type of. Field. Yeah. Uh, people do enjoy when, like, when when you do get a more immersive experience. People do enjoy that a lot, and um, it kind of shows. Like we, we were getting extremely busy uh, the moment that we opened up the arena. We had a lot of uh, returning traffic as well. When did the new so, uh, um, location open? Uh, it was open February 22nd. February this 22nd? Year. Yep. yep, so just <coughs> six months in-ish. Yep. Yeah, six yeah. months in. Congrats, and that's pe so cool. People are loving it. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it actually, um, like I, I really like knowing uh, the, the fact that uh, our arena, um, and, and that it actually basically um, became like a landmark in, uh, in the city. 
Um, so you can tell that uh, Sioux Falls actually has a better arena than any bigger cities in the Quad States. Yeah. At least that's how it is currently. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Good job. That's so cool. And, the, and it's, it's also nice to see the kids coming in and it, ha, passing fun time together, this type of stuff. I want to ask you this question because there's so much backlash that's currently going on around like gaming in general. And some people say it's like the worst form of escapism and all this other kind of stuff. <laughs> and I come, I come to the defense, you know, I care a lot about nuance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's some people that are just choosing to live in like most of their time in like virtual mm -hmm. realities, which is like, okay, sure, they're doing that. Maybe they don't want to mm -hmm. learn physical phys skills in the physical mm -hmm. world. But at the same time, there's interesting skills that are picked up from gaming. There's mm -hmm. a lot of really like, first of all, your motor skills and being able to like your dexterity with your hands, yep. your motor skills, you have to be able to find like really tiny things that are happening on like a screen and, and be fast, or fast response time to that. Yep. There's team, tons of team based skills yes. and objective based skills that have to happen, resource management that has to happen. Mm -hmm. So I want you to talk about like the benefits as the well. Man. Yeah. Well, the resource management would be a big one. Uh, there are some games that are based around like how to, um, how to do the budgeting economy. Build strategies. Yep. Yep. A lot of a lot of things you basically don't don't learn at school. <laughs> yeah, you don't learn. Yeah. Man, resource management at school. Yeah, yeah, the resource management would be very useful and uh, there is a lot of games that are like this. Um, obviously the communication, uh, teamwork would be the biggest one uh, biggest benefits in gaming. Mm -hmm. Uh, but of course the moral skills as well. Depending on what kind of games you're playing of course, but uh, uh, yes. Um, so it's more than just entertainment. You do develop some um, some management skills, definitely. It also, of course, will uh, will depend on the games that you're selecting. Mm -hmm. We do have uh, we do have quite a good selection of uh, real time strategy games. Yes, which is huge on resource management, teamwork, that kind of stuff. Then, what about would you say is the this like this proclivity that we have to tend to play games that have like weapons in them or that have us just obliterating other are you talking about uh, violence and, <laughs> and games yeah, yeah. What, are your, what's your, what are your thoughts around that um well uh to me personally the violence in the games uh of course you're gonna it, it's natural to see it in games uh it's a way for people to like release some pressure um um to blow off some steam, so to speak, because there was an actual study. Like I mean, of course, uh, every time there is uh, some shooting going on in a in a school or elsewhere, they yeah, they, they blame. Thing. Let's Sorry, blame the games thing. first. <laughs> Let's blame games. It's, it's so yeah. much nuance yeah, it's here. There's it's, guns that are being sold yep. illegally to yep. people. It's, it's because the guy yeah. was playing Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, yeah. it's definitely. Um, uh, not the case, uh, I would say. And like yeah. really serious world repercussions of people dying. You know, yeah. this is horrible. I, I do yeah, see. Yeah. I do see yeah. a lot of adults that have no clue. Uh, a lot of politicians are trying to blame uh, a game and as basically a part of the problem. How it's how basically like the main uh, the main reasoning is uh, that at least what they're trying to use as because the people that play video games cannot uh, set this apart from reality. And uh, <laughs> yeah. this is as, um, as far from truth as you can uh, tell. Yeah, yeah. Going, going and purchasing guns kids, without kids licenses. Do, and, uh, yes. Yeah, black kids, market gun sales has way more to do, I think, with this. Mm, than yeah, Kids so. do understand this. Like, even the very little kids understand that uh, the game is the game and reality is reality. Yeah. Just because you're playing the game, no one's gonna be jumping on the car and dragging people over like they do in GTA. They understand that this, uh, there are consequences in reality. This is why they have a lot of fun doing all this in the games. Where do you think the motor skills and the resource management, all these other things, where do you think they have most applicability to life? 
The resource management and teamwork. Where do mm -hmm. these have most applicable? Well, the resource management definitely will have with your pocketbook. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, uh, in a in a game, it's very simple. Uh, you waste your army in a game, and then mm -hmm. you didn't you didn't care to uh, to harvest the crops. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't didn't care to uh, to um, to extract the coal from the mines. And you ended up with no money, and now you only have one soldier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that one, I mean, you can uh, you can obviously bring to life because uh, yeah. if if you can't manage your spending habits, uh, you can't manage resources, uh, you're gonna have the same results in uh, real life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as far as the team team working, which you which you have to do a lot in 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 a lot of uh, in a lot of games. Um, and you have, and you had to do it in a lot of games before. Um, it can actually be very useful at fork plays. Um, we even have some businesses coming in to do a, a teamwork, and they actually play video games together. Like they separate in groups, and then they play against each other. Yeah. So there is, all, I mean, the, the teamwork has always been important in a lot of business uh, and a lot of businesses. Um, so obviously. Uh, you you can benefit from uh, from learning that in games too. Uh, what was the other? Uh, we did um, uh, motor skills. Motor skills. It can be useful, of course. Uh, it really depends what you do for a living. Yeah. yeah. Um, how about? Yeah, looking back at my life, I totally see how like motor skills, like the fast speeds, um, have helped me so much with. Uh, everything else that I've been doing in my the life. The attention and ease how you find things, like yeah. uh, that's another thing. Yeah. Like the visual, yeah. the visual attention. Your, sensi your sensitivity to acute changes. Um, how about... The reaction timing. Even. Reaction timing, yeah. How about, um, we were talking about teamwork, there's more and more games that are like, you know, throwing teamwork out the window. Like this, with Fortnite, this battle royale mode mm -hmm. is all about individualism. Yep. And it's, it's uh, like, it's, it's a, you only get one life mode. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, once you die, you have to wait until, um, yep. to respond until everyone else. And then the, everyone just slowly and steadily is, you know, uh, it's a, you know, is it around 16 or 100 or like, there's like bigger sizes. It goes, it's a variance in terms of size of yeah. players. And then, but the map sizes get smaller and smaller mm -hmm. as it closes off the map mm -hmm. size as the player count decreases. So point, and then, and then, so, so talk about this like also tendency towards these like individ, individualistic game modes too. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it, no doubt they're most popular games right now. Um, I'm not biggest fan of those kind of games. Like I'm, I'm, I'm never, You'll never see me play Battle Royale games. Mm. I usually just play team-based games. I play games like Battlefield. Yep. I still play uh, League of Legends, yeah. where it's all about teamwork. So I, I enjoy having a team to work with. Uh, so I would probably be the, the, the wrong person to ask about yeah, yeah. <laughs> Battle Royale tendency, games. <laughs> people's tendencies to merge that. You know what I want to um, hear your thoughts on is, where we're moving with uh, games like Stellaris, I like I like that game because it, it, it teaches people about like universe design or civilization design. It takes people outside of planet Earth a little bit, even I think more than like other games do, where you're literally able to simulate out universes and transit between planets and stars mm -hmm. and go and explore the different evolutions mm -hmm. of life. So it kind of broadens people's perspectives away from just one biological evolution around a star. Mm -hmm. What do you, yeah, where do you, what do you see like stories like that can be super expansive for people's creativity and mm -hmm. possibilities? They space? can be, but the person has to have like a will for a, and a capacity for a imagination. Um, sadly, those games aren't as popular. Um, it's almost like they offer too much information to mm. handle and apprehend. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, uh, th those games don't get played as much. Like, and we do, and we're, we're talking the the number of people that are willing to play them is such small that uh, we don't even offer most of that that kind of a games. Content. So, so you you they, hit it right there. You have to keep in mind the public attention span. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. It's uh, it's 
not getting any um, higher. <laughs> it's actually getting reduced. Like people lose the interest so fast nowadays in things. So the the lone strategy games just take too much daytime. Like the the yeah. last game that was somewhat close to the one that you just described was Spore. Mm -hmm. And it was released, I think, around 2008 or 2009. It was getting quite a bit of play in our uh, store back then, but uh, then, you know, trends change. They do. And so this juxtaposition between what a, a game that has a ridiculous amount of information mm -hmm. versus ones that are like, in a sense, these like Battle Royale style Fortnites, they're really fast. Mm -hmm. They're really little bit of information. You just need to know how mm -hmm. to, you know, just to find enemies and take them down and try mm -hmm. and win that round and then go mm -hmm. to play another round. So, mm -hmm. th so it's kind of like the style is going with the attention span of, of the civilization. <laughs> <laughs> kind of interesting. Um, how about with a, like, the graphics increases have been so profound over the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. We went from just Pong to these photorealistic gameplays and we're going, we're talking about computer graphics and all this stuff yep. at the very beginning. Does it feel like this itself is already an 80 year long simulation for you? Like an 80 year long virtual reality experience <laughs> for you? No, it does not. And uh, I also have to add the, the monitors, keyboards, mice, uh, TVs, they're not going away. There oh, are, you think so? Yeah, they're still they're still gonna be there for a very long time. For like two decades, you think? Um, I don't know if it's gonna be for the two decades, yeah, but yeah. definitely for Five. one at least. It's okay, okay. it's just more like it's the most convenient. Everything else they try to come up with is usually pretty bad. Like it's usually just some gimmick. Um, yeah, yeah. You um, you probably remember about ten years ago or so, the TV makers were pushing hard for the stereo like a stereo glasses for the TVs. Remember that? What was on the TVs? No. <laughs> exactly. You don't even remember no, this what anymore. Was, what was on the TVs? It's it like a stereo effect a stereo where you put like a, a stereo glasses. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, remember those. Yeah. We, we had some manufacturers, yes. in, including NVIDIA, uh, bring, uh, basically sending one to our store yeah, yeah. and people would play with those. Like, yeah, cool man. And then just <laughs> moves on to the next one. Like those didn't last at all. You would try and have like a four-person movie when like it's with a, it has a very, very. I would say it has a very unique um, market. Uh, I mean that that technology. Like you yes. you go to the movie and uh, sometimes like if I if I know the movie is gonna have a lot of cool visuals. I would probably choose to go over 3D, to the yeah. 3D. I yeah. mean, they call it 3D. It's <laughs> more like a stereo movie. Yeah. I, I, I will go then, but like, it's it's not something I would want to have at home. So it's exactly the same kind of a concept with the uh, with the monitors and um, you know, like they they just not gonna have anything. They're not gonna have any glasses that you just put on and 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 play like this. Uh, just uh, just to add to this. The VR gaming is completely different than actual like uh, traditional gaming. Yeah, that's you true. can't play longer than one or two hours. Yeah, you will get tired. That one person tried, I think, being in VR for a week or something, mm -hmm. and then recorded himself. He slept with the glasses on and shit. It was actually crazy. <laughs> and then, like afterward, you can probably have some serious well, physiological you get, differences. I mean, you just think about this: when you play in the VR, you get a lot more information. Uh, mm. That you you are receiving a lot more information. Yeah. You're completely there. You get information in both eyes. Your brain is getting tricked. So it does put yeah. some strain. Uh, so you do actually get tired. You get tired much faster Gosh. than you were. Just you sitting and relaxing on your couch and playing with a controller, it's yeah. completely different. Yeah. You just can't do it for hours. The VR, you can't do it for hours. In a sense, you're tricking your brain into teleporting into but a even, new reality. I mean, just being next to your eyes. Uh, it, for it those is right glasses. here. It's yep. literally next, being right, right next to your eyes, yeah. it will like uh, you will get tired. The eyes will get the tired. The eyes are tired. You're, you're, you're tricking your brain, so, you're teleporting it yeah. into So VR. like, if somebody thinks that, uh, you know, in five years, we're not even gonna have any consoles, not gonna have any PCs, just gonna have a bunch of VRs in our store, for example, it's simply not gonna be the case. In 20 years, there's gonna be such different stuff. It's oh, 20 what, years. What, what, yeah, we'll see, if, yeah, we'll see how well we can. So you, you don't think this is already a virtual reality or a simulation? You feel like, what do you, what do you, how do you feel about that concept? Um, 
elaborate a little bit more. That this, our life, is already a simulation mm -hmm. or already a... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the virtual reality part? Yeah, is our life already, you know, after you die, mm -hmm. are you going to just be like, oh, that was such a fun game, and then... <laughs> no, I don't. I, no. I obviously don't think that. You don't think no, that. No. You think this is a product of biological evolution that we have consciousness yep. in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just evolution. It's just evolution, okay. At least that's my, that's I mean, that's my personal take. <laughs> do, do you ever feel like um, that this is one big like artistic expression of God or creation or source or anything like that with all of us being our own little paint strokes on the canvas. <laughs> does it ever feel like that? It does. It surely does. It does? <laughs> cool. yeah. Tell yeah. us more about your relationship with that. Um, well, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, of course, I did, I did, I did study a lot of like history, evolution, yeah. the dinosaurs, and yeah. all that. I mean, it's it's just never-ending question how we became what we are and where we came from. Yeah. And I'm afraid we we won't be able to answer that in our lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there there you go. I mean, I, I I enjoy watching the movies where they, I mean, the, like the the one that was actually really that really impressed me was um, um, Prometheus. I don't know if you've watched that one. Have you have you seen it? One more time, Prime. Pr Prometheus. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. Prometheus is so Prometheus. good. Yeah, yeah it's, it, so it's, good. it's very underrated, it's so but it it yeah. it makes you wonder all those questions, oh, like where we yes. came from. If we were, and then like, so I watched that movie multiple times. I didn't yeah. watch it just once. Then I went to YouTube to see what others are saying so, about yeah, it. And it's yeah, like, yeah. and of course, somebody has to take it to the extreme. So like, if we were designed by the engineers mm -hmm. or like, if we were designed by, um, uh, what was the race that they called there? I forgot. Yeah. Titans? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So they were they were also designed by engineers and then this guy keeps going further and further. So who, yeah. who made the engineers? Some, exactly. Somebody yeah. made somebody. Who made source? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's just like, I mean, it's just going to be like a never-ending never ending, story. Yeah. Uh, but uh, f for me, it's very hard to believe that uh, I, you just came to be from like this little explosion that mm -hmm. made like one cell yeah, that yeah. became like two cells <laughs> and then ended up being flies and then <laughs> you know <laughs> so it just i mean uh like when, whenever i've watched some um so to so to say documentary about yeah. you know like dinosaur era how like well, this is how we're just going to prove you that evolution actually goes on, right? Mm -hmm. So, the, they had this hedgehog, right? Uh, or, I mean, some uh, reptile. Mm -hmm. um, and it just happened to, like, like it just happened that it, it just wanted to, to, to immerse itself so much or with, with the environment that it started changing colors over time. Like, millions of years that passed by. So and then, cool. and then yeah. it, no, it's not true. The chameleon mm -hmm. does that. Yeah, but it's like they're trying to tell you that uh, it used to not be able to do all this. And, and then, then it, it was trying. It genetically mutated to be able to yeah. do that. Well, can that's you, kind of, can you kind genetically of, mutate? I, we've genetically <laughs> mutated a lot over the last six million years. You yeah, know? but we didn't, I mean, we... We're oh, mutating right now mm -hmm. by using VR and, mm -hmm. yeah, all this but, stuff. But remember, like, with all those cool features that, you know, like, uh, let's say the frogs, they can grow a leg, you know, if it gets <laughs> chopped up. That? Yeah, <laughs> like, the, yeah, do, sure, do you think sure, they had sure. enough brain power to do that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, it's like or or like they couldn't do it before, and then millions of years I have later, a I have a they just suddenly have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a long period of time, Max. Okay. And, and genetics does a lot of interesting things. So you're saying the chameleon, for example, if we take chameleon, right? Sure. Like it used to not be able to change the color. Then it to avoid like, prey. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then it then like and really wanted to do it. It's right? a survival mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. And but same thing with those um, those uh, there's sea creatures that mm -hmm. do the same thing. They when mm -hmm. they latch onto a rock, mm -hmm. they can change to the same color of the but, rock to avoid but, prey. But what basically the documentaries are trying to say is that they used to not have this ability. Yeah. 
Well, that's the general idea so, of like, the combinatorics you, you just, of biology. You, yeah, you just really want to want this, right? Because and the then, ones eventually, <laughs> yeah, it's just, oh, you know, it's interesting. It just yeah. doesn't sound too, you know, <laughs> sure. realistic. Sure. Because like some chameleon wanted to like start changing the colors, right? And well, then the, the, the combinatorics mm -hmm. changed a bunch mm -hmm. of different options, and then the mm -hmm. one that exists, the one that l l the one that lived on the longest mm -hmm. because they could do that feature, mm -hmm. ended up propagating its genes further. Mm -hmm. That's the general theory of it. It's a, it's a theory because like why this why this one can do it, but the other types that are like similar to that can't. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about with I just I'm curious about this mm -hmm. question now. Do you yeah. do you ever feel like our disconnection from nature, from the air that we breathe, the water we drink, mm -hmm. the food that we eat, the love that we have for each other. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like that disconnection is the reason why we have so many of the issues in our world? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the human brain is pretty complex. Uh, so you know, then we, we do a lot of unnatural things, so it's kind of like a, I guess, uh, part of doing business in a way. <laughs> part of the tree growing crooked out of the planet, which is yeah. us. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the, the brain is very, uh, like the human brain is extremely uh, complex. It is, uh, totally. And there is a lot of things that can go wrong with it arguably the most complex thing and then the civilization we made is even more complex mm -hmm. so how about what do you think is the meaning of life meaning of life well that's a good question <laughs> <laughs> and we, everybody tries to come up with their own answer for this uh, like to have their own purpose to do good you know that kind of thing um, but there is no proof Currently, that there is any purpose of life, uh, just to like live on and uh, have basically something that's left after you you're gone. You so part of like the meaning is to leave something. Yeah. Like kids or yeah. like mm -hmm. um, or like you also have this interesting butterfly effect that you've had on on kids and mm -hmm. adults that have come into Galaxy Gaming that have had mm -hmm. experiences with you that mm -hmm. have been then able to go and tell their people. Hey, I played VR. It was so interesting, mm -hmm. or this laser tag experience, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're leaving behind that. Well, this are, I mean, uh, the the business that we're in, in a way, is um, we're not selling like a cool equipment. I mean, uh, yeah, we do actually, <laughs> because we do, we do sell gaming PCs, uh, like a custom built ones. Uh, but mainly, what people leave, like what people uh, remember when they leave, like the. Uh, they live memories. They like they they live with memories. They live uh, experiences something uh, that they haven't before. It, it's kind of like an interesting feeling that uh, knowing that uh, you introduce people to some some experiences yes. and memories because um, I mean what you can't really have much fun here definitely because the 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 weather. I mean we don't live in a in a Tropical most like climate, yeah, yeah we don't really live in the most like um friendly environment here six months of freezing <laughs> cold temperatures yeah, yeah and then two months of extreme heat <laughs> yeah. uh and just in general like i mean even in like in a, like I, i've been traveling uh myself like i i do go to florida quite often but even they don't really have specifically like a very similar type of entertainment that we do offer here like in uh, i mean technically we're like when, when you look at the our business model uh we're hybrid gaming sense slash are, yeah. entertainment center um you definitely don't have anything like this in san francisco i'm uh, pretty sure we don't have no. a combination of laser tag with no pc we, gaming yeah plus we're, we're the, VR. yeah we're yeah. currently the only uh, entertainment center that is basically like a hybrid pc console uh vr and laser tag i do all like under that. one roof. that's a really cool combo yeah uh, but um I guess, I guess what I'm, uh, what I was trying to say is that uh, the the memories um, we still have some kids coming in um, that started coming in back when we first opened, and uh, everyone still has a lot of great memories from all those days. 
playing games together or playing laser tag or experiencing virtual reality for the first time. Are you considering a second city to open another uh, game of gaming in? No, no. It's, no. Uh, it, it, it takes too much of a personal approach uh, that I don't think that franchising or like having a second location in a different city uh, would, would be a great idea. Uh, a lot of this is a personal approach and uh, if somebody was to open similar like a business that would be similar to this you would have to uh, invest a lot uh, of your, like of a personal approach there that's cool yeah. so like I, I don't see this type of business succeeding if you just have like a, basically like a faceless corporation um, and it's definitely not the business uh, where you can get away with, um, you know, being like a, a very simple, uh, without any interaction, kind of like what you get in McDonald's or Burger King. No, totally not like that. <laughs> so yeah. it's, um, it's, it's very personal approach and even like the staff members that we have, um, uh, no one is like alike, um, yeah. everyone is different. And uh, customers do remember pretty much every one of them. You're creating memories and leaving those behind. I love that. What about what should kids and like? Well, I mean, just an example. Let's yes. Say um, we, we were the uh, we were basically the first ones in Sioux Falls to introduce the virtual reality to the community. And a lot of people like you'd be surprised how many people never travel anywhere, like don't leave the state. Um, so coming in to experience a virtual reality um, in 2000, you know, like in 2018 or 2019 um, is worth something. Yeah, especially because that they will re likely remember that that was the first place that they had to experience because in a decade when it's all over the place, you were the one that helped first bring it to them, which is huge. And hopefully it expanded their creativity, their their idea of what's possible. And um, that's a big part of this too, is leaving memories that expand people's creativity, their ability to find meaning and, and uh, bring their full gifts out to the world. What about um, a skill that you think kids and adults should learn as we go into this crazy exponential technology era? <laughs> Uh, don't lose themselves in the social networks. <laughs> uh, try to communicate more in person. And in our days, you've noticed more and more uh, people are just too attached to their phones, too, uh, too attached to uh, the social networks uh, more than anything. So that's kind of uh, like, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's gonna, it's gonna change anytime soon. Uh, but uh, you may have noticed like a lot of people don't even answer their phones anymore. They prefer texting or messaging and you lose out on a lot when you're actually not like talking to somebody over the phone. Um, you, you don't always get the full picture of what they're trying to tell you. So there is definitely a, like a lack of communication uh, because of the, I mean, social networks are obviously part of that. What do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? The most beautiful things in the world? <laughs> yeah. I honestly never thought of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I'd be able to answer that question. <laughs> you can take your time. Think about it for a little bit. <laughs> most beautiful thing in the world. If we're talking about like, like a visual, uh, I'll probably see the view of our planet from like a spaceship nearby. <laughs> mm -hmm. So something along those lines. And why? I don't know. It just uh, uh, and it just gives you like a very overall picture of uh, uh, of what we are, so so to speak. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to explain why I think, um, you know, that uh, specifically uh, this picture here. I guess it's because it probably shows life. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's the famous overview effect photo yeah. when we first saw the Earth yeah. from space. And it was like everyone has that we ever know has lived and you died probably, on that planet. You have probably seen like a, there is a, like what I really enjoy. There is one video that I really enjoy watching. It's a, it's a time lapse of, of the Earth. Like shows basically like a night time, all the lights on yeah, it. Yeah. That's oh, really so cool. Gorgeous, yeah. So I love watching Half of the Earth is lit, the other mm -hmm. half is at night with the lights, and then it just moves so fast, mm -hmm. and then... And it also shows how tiny it is. <laughs> it shows how tiny the rock is. Mm -hmm. Even though it's huge, it's also <laughs> tiny. And yeah. eight billion of us now on it, and hopefully we can expand more, move con more consciousness, more meaning, more creativity, birth more people out into the cosmos, like all these games are all about, <laughs> you know? A lot of them are about that, so... This was a lot of fun. I feel like you know we went all over the place on gaming and yeah. and your and your life and trajectory and bringing this forward and meaningful experiences you've brought to people. <laughs> Max, thank you for joining yep. us on the show. Yeah, it was my pleasure. To be a huge pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Also, have more conversations with your friends, your families, coworkers, people online about gaming and about the future of gaming, about virtual reality, about laser tag, about really cool, meaningful experiences, being able to bring those to people around the world faster. Check out the links in the bio below, thegalaxygaming.com, also their Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter profiles. Check those out. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the spiritual leaders, the organizations that you believe in support simulation. Our links are below our PayPal, cryptocurrency, Patreon links are down there. Also, you can design cool merch and get paid. All that is down there. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace.